Good evening, everybody. This is Chris Haynes, and this is Connor Folks checking in. And we are uh, getting ready for our uh, Wednesday night uh, check in and uh, study time with you. We hope that you are having a great holy week. And in the midst of everything that's different this week, we hope you're finding time to spend some time uh, just remembering what this week is about in terms of our faith and uh, just uh, remembering the uh, the things that Jesus uh, went through on his way toward the resurrection, which we will celebrate on Easter Sunday. Uh, how how are things uh, at your place, Connor? I, I know you're staying busy with lots of stuff to do, but uh, are, are you uh, are, are, are you are you finding some nurturing time too, or is it just all busyness? <laughs> Oh man, it depends on it depends on the day. Sometimes I've I was talking to my cousin yesterday, and I feel like uh, I feel like being cooped up. Um, especially, I feel like at the end of the day, I never feel like I accomplished anything because I have so many things that I could be accomplishing now. Yeah. So it's like I always appreciated the work day where it was like, all right, I went into the office today, I wrote this or I did this, and then I came home. So it's like. I went somewhere and they came somewhere. So I felt like I did something, but now it's like sitting here. It's like, okay, I could be cleaning right now. I could be organizing right now. I also need to make sure I'm staying in shape. I also need to make sure it's, it's beautiful outside. So go for a walk. Also, you know, I could be picking up a new hobby right now. So go and try to pick up a hobby. And also like you still have work. So make sure you're connecting to people and you're doing devotions and creating new content so that people can uh, encourage each other online. So it's like, all of that is now packed into like, you could be doing all of that constantly. So yeah, yeah I think it's stressful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I did, I was telling you earlier and I'm really excited about it um, is I have been, my sleep schedule has just been destroyed. So yeah. like there'll be times where like, I can't go bed to bed. Like I'll be lying there and I can't go to bed until like two or three uh, type thing. I've also realized that I need to like uh, stop like, anything electronically at like maybe 10 o'clock to help like calm my brain down but what i started doing now is like i went and bought some i got some legos sent to me and uh so this is my start of my legos that i'm gonna do it like my emergency legos at like 12 o'clock at night because it likes putting my brain to work in a non like stimulating electronic way and then i got tired and went to bed at like 11 last night mm. So now it was like more like one thirty, but yeah, it was, it was good. So I'm starting to work on that. And uh, if you think you know what this is, comment in the comment section. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. I, I was not good at all at figuring out what it was. Well, I, I got the, the general uh, area or uh, theme. Uh, you, did. you picked up on the theme very quickly, but it is just a skeleton still. This is only bag one out of three. Yeah. So, so yeah, you did, you did kind of, you know, you knew the genre. So yeah. yes. that's all that matters. <laughs> well, but yes, that's how I am doing. Um, so it's kind of day by day, hour by hour here. Yeah. So. Well, I, that's good. Yeah. And I, I'm, you know, th things are busy this week. I mean, we're still trying to do some things to observe Holy Week, even though we're not together physically with the people we would normally be physically together with but uh, so there's there's plenty going on but i i'm i you know at least when it's not been raining you know when the sun's been out i've been actually getting out and walking around my neighborhood so uh, getting a little bit of uh exercise so that's that's not a bad thing so yeah but uh well all right we uh we're we're, we're coming to you tonight and just uh wanted to, to bring you a few announcements and updates about things. Again, uh, we are still planning on not having any uh, in-person activities at the church through the end of April. And uh, starting this week, we, we mentioned this Sunday morning, but starting this week, we actually are closing our office uh, just to uh, follow the governor's latest uh, mandate about uh, being safer at home. So uh, Lori and Patricia and Connor and myself are all doing most of our respective work from our homes. Uh, you know, so we're going into the church when we need to, but uh, otherwise we are at home. So if you need anything from any of us, you can contact us by 
phone or email, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're checking our voicemails at the church uh, remotely, so you might not get us as quickly as you would otherwise normally, but uh, please do uh, let us know anything that we can help you with, and we'll be happy to do that. It just may take us a little longer than normal to get back to you. Make sure this week that you are checking in to our Facebook or now our YouTube channels. Uh, we are posting our midday Holy Week devotionals. Normally this week we would be getting together in person and having lunch together and hearing uh, an inspirational word from one of our local Lexington area pastors. But this year, since we're not able to meet together for lunch, we are uh, our, our, our pastors are recording those messages and we are posting those every day at noon and you can uh, jump in again either via Facebook or YouTube and uh, comment be part of the conversation and we encourage you to do that and if you can't watch at noon then uh, you can watch it later on in the day but uh, so far we've had some great messages from uh, Clay Hallmark at First Baptist Church and Donna Barber at Good News Worship Center. Tomorrow we will have, uh, today we did have, <laughs> uh, uh, Jimmy Burroughs from uh, Pinson Baptist Church. Thursday uh, we're having uh, Sharla Burnett, uh, who is now a local pastor at uh, three of our different uh, local uh, United Methodist churches. And then Friday, we're having uh, David Beecham from First Pentecostal Church to uh, provide the, the message for us. So uh, some great speakers and great messages, and we are encouraging you to just to, to be a part of that. And uh, we will uh, we'll continue to use that as a way of being together. Uh, <clears throat> For Thursday evening, normally we would be having a Monday Thursday service uh, together at the church to remember Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. What we're encouraging you to do this year, we're going to <coughs> have, excuse me. You all right? Uh, I'm never all right anymore. <coughs> no, I'm fine. Um, uh, Thursday evening at six o'clock, we're going to have uh, a video going live by Facebook and YouTube. And so for our six o'clock uh, Monday Thursday devotional, Thursday evening, we are going to encourage you to gather uh, around your dinner table. And it can be, you know, just you yourself at your dinner table, or if you're there with your family, gather around your table with your family. And uh, if, if that's the time when you normally eat dinner, then, you know, go ahead and have your meal prepared. And we're going to have this as a kind of a devotional time leading into dinner. Uh, or if that's not the time you normally eat, then at least have some kind of snack there. Um, and what we're encouraging is for you to, to have some comfort food. That's kind of the theme of the night, something that you find to be comfort food for you and uh, the people that you're with in your household. And so we will gather together. We will remember Jesus' uh, supper with his disciples, and we will have, uh, it's, it's really kind of a love feast, uh, just to, to remember uh, uh, that uh, the acts of service that Jesus engaged in and how we can be uh, part of that service even when we are not together physically. So it, it's going to be kind of a fun time, I think. And so make sure that you're, you're there around your dinner table, six o'clock Thursday evening. And uh, again, just have some kind of comfort food that you can uh, have for yourself there uh, along with your family. Uh, do you, do you, Connor, do you have some comfort food that you can have, uh, you can have prepared for yourself? I just ate my last Oreos. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Connor, the king of the Oreos, is without right. Oreos. Look, it's very um, irresponsible to go to the store just for Oreos. <laughs> so if you go to the store tomorrow morning and you just happen to buy Oreos and swim by my house, I wouldn't say <laughs> no to that. Um, I also made this really good soup that I'm making tonight. Um, pizza, mac and cheese, pepperoni pizza, mac and cheese. So maybe that's like, that's the comfort food to do that's in a cat iron skillet. So that's like, that's like comfort, comfort food. So that's what I'm doing. Absolutely. That, that sounds amazing. I, I, I want to hear how that works out. So have you, have you made that before or is that new? No. No, it's just, uh, I, I do like a, I have like an app for, with, for meals and recipes and grocery shopping and all that. So yeah, it was on this week's, yeah, it was pepperoni, pizza, mac and cheese. 
So Very the fact cool. that it's mac and cheese in a cast iron skillet, that's comfort food, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Next time we talk, I want an update on that. So, All right. All right. Um, so that's Thursday night. Uh, Friday night, also at 6 p.m., uh, we will be having an online uh, Good Friday remembrance of the passion of Jesus together. So make sure that uh, you join together with your uh, with your family or whoever you're with, and uh, we will uh, have that Good Friday remembrance at 6 p.m. Friday. And then uh, Sunday morning is Easter Sunday, and we will have, again, just an online streaming worship experience to celebrate the resurrection together. So uh, make sure that you are part of that Sunday morning at 1015. And once again, we appreciate everybody who's been supporting the church financially and otherwise. Uh, if you want to uh, continue to do so, you can send a check to the church or use our GiveLify link that we have had uh, posted available on some of our social media uh, links. Or if you download the GiveLify app to your phone, uh, if you open it and enable location services, it will uh, find our church as one of the, the churches that is local to us here in Lexington. So thank you for all of that. And, and thank you for the, uh, the other things that you're doing. I know one of the things that uh, we, we've seen happening the last week, week or two uh, our nitwits at church have been making masks for not only uh, church staff for us to wear as we're doing our work, but also for uh, medical professionals and other folks that need masks. So thanks to the nitwits. And it's not just the nitwits. I've seen people folk posting that uh, other folks are doing it as well. So thanks to everybody who's doing that. That means a lot during this time as well. So, uh, and again, just if you need anything, please reach out and uh, I'll be happy to help or, or any of us uh, will be happy to, to to help and just uh just stay connected so just l let us know all right also a, a thing that i did um and so if i miss some people it's not my fault but what i realized is uh, uh i saw that there's still people celebrating birthdays uh during this time and i know that birthdays uh, are something that we look forward to well most of us look forward to uh what that's a side tangent. What age do you think it's where like people start dreading their birthdays? I would say like 38. <laughs> you know, it depends. I, I, I still don't. Yeah. Thank you for uh, putting me on the old side of that. I, think. <laughs> um, I, I can't say that I dread birthdays, but they don't oh, mean the same thing. To me. Yeah. I like, I, I don't mind being 46, but uh, they don't mean that I don't get as excited about them as I did when I was, you know, your age when I was a young whippersnapper. Yeah. So. I feel like once I got into college, though, like, you kind of wanted people, like, you were always like, oh, what's my birthday? I don't know. But, like, who's who's wishing me a happy birthday? Who's who's helping me out? Because we always want, it's a day that we want to feel, uh, we always want to feel loved and appreciated. But, like, our birthday is when we're like, okay, maybe that'd be great. So, but what I realized is that people are still having birthdays. And so I I know that we have birthdays written down on a lot of people. So I have that sheet at my house. Uh, but um, if you have, if you have a birthday or if you have a child that has a birthday and you want them to have a card sent by one of us, please send me a text or email. Uh, because as I said, is I have a whole list, but that might be missing some people. Uh, so I'm really going to try to be focusing on sending some birthday cards uh, out to people. Uh, I sent some late. So some birthdays this week, uh, have already gotten some, uh, but that's one thing that I'm trying to do. And also, uh, if you do know somebody is doing something special for them even if they are 47, 48, 39 plus, uh, just sending them something to be thinking of them uh, type thing uh, is a cool way for us to stay connected uh, during birthday times. Uh, so yeah, I, I've been thinking of that, but I also wanted to make that like an official announcement so that if I do miss somebody, now I look bad. So I want to apologize, but also though I, I'm going up a list. And so if you uh, have someone that I should be sending a birthday, card to please let me know and i'd love to send them a card yeah so yeah that'd be awesome so yeah i mean it's an yeah. idea so like yeah. i said was, i i could be missing some people and also i really haven't sent that many cards in my like youth so like i don't know like the the give and take on the mail and then nowadays i don't know so i think some people that had birthdays like monday or tuesday i didn't send cards until like yesterday or monday so uh so yeah, they probably won't get them until today or tomorrow. So, but anyhow, that was one thing. So 
lots of announcements. It's it's kind of tough that like this is our only like kind of time to check in uh, type thing. So it's like I feel like we've been talking already for like ten minutes and we haven't even. It's just all been announcements and trying to get on the same page. So. Yeah. Well, could 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 I open us with a prayer before we launch into our further discussion? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And uh, as always, if you've got any uh, prayer requests, please uh, type them in our comments so that we can uh, stay on top of those and be praying with you as a community about any of the needs we have. But uh, let's uh, let's just take a time to again take take a couple of deep breaths and invite God's Spirit into our homes and into uh, our bodies as we prepare to, to to talk together. Holy God, we invite you to be in us and among us. We invite you to come as the spirit who blows like the wind. We invite you to come as the light which illuminates all that we do. Especially this week, we are mindful that we reflect on all of the ways that you have sacrificed to make relationship with us possible. And we give you thanks for all of the things that you have made known to us through Jesus Christ. And as we talk more about prayer tonight, we invite you to, uh, to open our hearts and minds so that we will always be open to what you would say to us now and always. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I, I kind of spilled the beans there, but uh, you, uh, we've been talking uh, the last several weeks about different ways that we can uh, stay uh, connected uh, through e even when we're apart. And so kind of wrapping up that idea uh, with the idea of prayer. So what, what have you, I, I know I, I've been part of some uh, conversations that uh, where you've led our youth through uh, some models for prayer and ways of thinking about prayer, but uh, maybe that would be a good way to to share with our uh, the rest of our uh, church family. So help us to think about that. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, I know that this week, above all other weeks, there's a lot of uh, content and devotionals and stuff. So we wanted to keep this weekly thing going, but this is going to be probably. Uh, kind of a quicker one, uh, kind of walk through it. But uh, the four things we've been walking through, uh, worship, connecting to people, service, and prayer, um, is my mind, some people would be like, wait, isn't worship and prayer connected? Uh, and yes, you you worship through prayer, but my mind has always seen prayer uh, in, a, in a way of, um, it's a spiritual discipline. All right, so spiritual discipline, but there's a lot of spiritual disciplines, but I've always seen prayer as a spiritual discipline that fully roots us and connects us into the spiritual presence with God. And so I've always kind of seen prayer, uh, I mean, not the most important, but I think one of the most important is because it gives us uh, and teaches us uh, a way to like sit in silence, rest in silence, uh, and uh, speak with God, listen to God, and then act from that. So in my mind is prayer is kind of the discipline that helps us act on all other disciplines. Prayer is like when we do stuff in ministry, it's like we pray before we act. We pray where God leads us. And then out of that being leading, we act. And so I think that prayer, I disconnected it from worship is because prayer is kind of what leads us to worship, leads us to connecting and leads us to uh, serving and giving. And so today I just kind of wanted to walk through a very popular model of praying, kind of talk about that model, and then kind of give some practical ways to put this idea of prayer into action. But to start, Pastor Chris, if somebody walked into your office and said, what's the point of praying? 
I say things out loud, but I have no idea if God even hears or listens to me. So I could just be spinning hot air into or hot air into the air. What is the point of praying? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> easy, easy question to start off with. Oh yeah. No, no pressure there at all. I mean, you know, we we uh I, I guess it was actually last year during Lens. We we, you know, had a whole I had a whole sermon series talking about uh, the Lord's Prayer as the model for our prayer life. And, you know, we, we talked about different aspects of that. And um, I, I, well, one of the things that I would say is especially, you know, you, you, the, if you go through the Lord's Prayer, I mean, you, you've, you've got, you know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So you've got some idea of, of praise there and, and, and uh, kind of adoring God for who God is. And, uh, you know, you've, uh, you know, You've got, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's seeking, you know, seeking for, to, to align our lives with what God wants for us. I mean, in that way, it, th th there's an aspect of prayer that, you know, it's not so much trying to treat God as the great cosmic Santa Claus in the sky, you know, where we just try to get everything that we're asking for, but uh, it's also trying to align our lives uh, to, to be more like what God intends. So it's, it's, it's not trying to change God's mind about things so much as it's trying to change the way we look at things. So that, that's a big part of prayer too. That is, that is beautiful. I, yeah, I feel like sometimes prayer uh, kind of turns into, I know we've heard this example all the time, but it kind of turns into a gumball machine, mm. right? Like we almost view prayer as like put in your prayer, twist it and you get a gumball type thing. And so, but there is something a lot deeper to it. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we started recording, but uh, last week, uh, one of my classes, there's a quote that really stood out to me, uh, was that the function of prayer is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of one who prays. Mm. I think that really stood out to me and kind of what you were saying is the idea of like prayer is not intended for us to just you know, talk with God or just uh, to help us like figure out our lives. Like prayer is intended to change the whole essence of who we are. And so if we're just praying, just like, just if we're praying at our meals or if we're just doing a quick prayer, like, all right, make sure you protect everyone I love. That is part of prayer, but that's just kind of almost checking it off or almost uh, using prayer as a tool for yourself versus really kind of changing it inside of you well yeah i mean i, I think part of the, the whole purpose of the christian life you could say is to become more and more christ-like to become more like jesus and so uh you know it, it, with jesus you know in the sermon on the mount he said that it was you know we, we are to become perfect as our father in heaven is perfect which is kind of this impossible sounding goal but i the way i break that down is to become more and more like who jesus is so yeah um and and so if if we seek to be changed by prayer that helps us along the road of becoming more like who jesus is and who he taught us to be and that can be intimidating because becoming like jesus is almost demanding perfection so it's like it can be intimidating because it's like being becoming like Jesus is like we're striving it's almost like we're striving to be perfect but we know we can't be perfect so it's like what's going on so I do believe that resting in these ideals and presence of prayer does allow us not to become perfect uh, but allows us to understand uh, more of what it means to live like Jesus so I, I do like that my, my head just went to uh, uh, remember the titans which I've watched like three times because it's on Disney Plus in just these last three weeks. Uh, but in the state championship game, when, uh, you know, uh, he, the coach was just like, y'all did great. If we don't win, it's fine. And then the, the, uh, Julius was like, uh-uh, coach, you've always demanded perfection on us. And so we're not going to stop now. And so this idea of like, there's going to be times where it doesn't feel like we can get there. It doesn't feel like it's available, but we can still put in the effort, put in the process to do it. Uh, so prayer is kind of that aspect of like really working towards being cross like Christ, like towards this idea of being sanctified uh, type thing. Which is a very, yeah, Methodist idea. So 
Yeah, right. But I have to throw that in. So is it, I'm looking off to my screen because Isabella's not in my house right now, but my second cat is right now. So oh. I'm wondering if my second cat is going to walk over here at all. She never gets near me now unless Isabella's not in the house because Isabella just gets in her face like crazy. So she like, when there's two people in my house, she loves it because she'll go to the second person and be petted on. But so, yeah, so she might come over here and then you get to meet my second cat. Yeah. I, what, what's your second cat's name? Uh, Gabbana. Gabbana. All right. Yeah. Like, like Dolce, Dolce and Gabbana? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she came into the, the kennel with uh, D- Dolce and Gabbana is what they named them. So, but, okay, so prayer. <laughs> but if you see me looking off to my, my right, maybe your left, like that's why um, type thing. But so prayer, what I wanted to do today is walk through a pretty popular prayer model called the Acts Prayer Model uh, and then give people uh, practical ways to dive into these, uh, these prayer types. Um, type thing we've done things at youth uh, called and you've probably heard of these before not you but everyone watching as well uh, called prayer stations uh, where we've gone around uh, and gone into different prayer stations and the whole idea of prayer stations is to worship or engage in a certain activity just in different ways right using our different senses doing our different imaginations and stuff like that and so uh, when we break down this model is me and pastor chris are going to give some of y'all uh, some practical things that y'all can do uh, this week uh, for the rest of your life with prayer and uh, just to, different ways to engage in a prayer life and different ways to engage in what it means uh, to be acting towards this idea of not just praying to God because that's what a good Christian does, but praying because that's changing the nature of who we are. So brother Chris, have you heard of the ax model before? I have. I, I remember learning about that when I was in youth group growing up. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm, it's something I'm familiar with. Did you, uh, do you enjoy it? Did you kind of just like, ah, eh, they're just trying to get me to pray. So I'm just going to kind of throw that off. <laughs> I hate it when people try to get me to pray. <laughs> hey, sometimes when people try to do models like this, it's so cheesy. You know, it's like, we're going to create an acronym. Like, let's create an acronym for fasting. Ah, you know, like stuff like that. You're just kind of like, well, and, and and to be fair, I mean, yeah, it is. It's a model, which does not just like you know, the Lord's prayer is a model prayer. It doesn't mean that we have to do that exact thing every single time we pray, yeah. but it's a way to help us remember kind of the fullness of, um, you know, what we're what we're about when we go into prayer. So, so yeah, I mean, it's it's it can be helpful. Amen. I agree completely. Um, yeah, it's all about a model. So this model I've used with youth before, and I like it because of how it breaks down prayer. So we're going to use it for everybody right now. Now, do you see my screen? I do. Um, (laughs) on mine, the way it's showing up, it doesn't say acts prayer. It just has TS prayer. You can't see. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, can you see it better now? I can see it now. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to put it up in front of people so they can kind of read the words, um, type thing and we'll just kind of speak through it but so the acts prayer what it stands for is adoration confession thanksgiving and i'm pretty sure supplication and i'm pretty sure i spelled it right so yeah you uh, do just don't spell check me on that you so <laughs> this is a perfect way is as sometimes when people go to pray we go how are we supposed to pray and like you've said we've led them to the lord's prayer and do that and so the lord's prayer has these elements in it Uh, But then we get in the book of Acts, we get this model of how to pray. So first we start uh, with adoration. Um, So adoration, uh, Brother Chris, do you want to switch off like explaining these so not one of us just talks the whole time? (laughs) Sure, sounds good. So I'll do adoration. You do an example for adoration. You do confession, and I'll do the example for confession, vice versa. Sounds good. Uh, Cool. Yeah, now you get the live brainstorming process of things we've <laughs> to talk about before we started a devotional. So anyway, so adoration, uh, this one is first and starts off is uh, when we pray is how often do we actually take time for adoration uh, to our creator, to our God? And so can you see this right now? What do you see on my screen right now, Brother Chris? Do you still just see the Axe model thing? It's blackness. Oh no! 
It's the inky blackness of night. It is uh, a starless night. It is an oil field. No, oh, okay, now you're back. All right, cool. That's, wow, I, I shouldn't have come back just to see how you're, how you're doing. <laughs> oh, today is just a great, like, uh, Bible study into our minds and how we normally are most of the time. So anyway, so adoration uh, is this idea of adoring, right? Or being aware of our creator. Uh, so adoration, for example, an example prayer of adoration is, Father, you are completely holy and so breathtakingly beautiful. I fall at your feet in adoration. So this is the idea of knowing who we are coming to when we pray and knowing uh, who we're praying to and why we're praying to our God. If you read in the book of Psalms, uh, multiple times, David uh, proclaims who God is. The creator, the almighty father, you have delivered me from my foes. Is This is the way of David uh, adoring or giving adoration and praising praises to God. Adoration is this idea that we aren't just coming to God to get something, right? That gumball prayer. But we understand that when we are entering into this time of prayer, who we are entering into this time of prayer with and why. So adoration is a great time to start our prayers to just when we take those breaths, when we take that time to really enter into this time of prayer is we're going, man, I come to you, God, because you are our creator. You are the one who gives me breath. You're the one who gives me direction. You put the stars in the sky in any way that you want to do it. But adoration sets the tone that we are not just coming uh, to get what we want. But we are coming to put ourselves at the feet of our creator, our sustainer, and our redeemer and spending time to really be in that mindset. Yeah. And, and you know, you, what adoration makes me think of um, is, you know, just – I, I like to think about, you know, th thinking of people who I just take delight in their presence. You know, I mean, if, if you, if, if you're, if you're at a, if you're at a party and you're surrounded by people that are just boring and you just, you know, they, they suck the life right out of you. But then you look across the room and you see that person who just makes your heart sing. And maybe that, maybe it's your, spouse or fiance you know hopefully you feel this way about alden and she feels this way about you i don't want yes, to I, do. I love her <laughs> so no, no hesitation good good a good man but uh or maybe it's a good friend or a, a parent or a child but somebody that just as soon as you see them you, you your your heart just kind of rises and you get that good feeling going on in your heart you know, that's kind of what i think about as adoration it's just putting ourselves a, a, again, it's not, it's not hard work doing this. It's just resting in God's presence and letting our hearts say, man, I'm glad I'm here, God, and I'm glad you're here with me because I love being with you. That, that's what adoration is. So. so what are some things, some practical ways that we can bring this idea of adoration into our prayer life? Mm. If we're doing a prayer station where we're really focusing on adoration, what are some maybe practical things that you've done before or, or that we could do as a time of prayer and adoration? I mean, I, again, it sounds a little cheesy, I guess, but, uh, you know, just take some time to write a little love letter to God, you know, mm -hmm. and just say, you know, you know, I, I, I am, I am so happy to spend time with you because, you know, I, I, I love the way that, you know, you, you have placed me in this, you know, family or this community. I just li list the reasons why you enjoy uh, just that, that time. And um, I don't know. That yeah. I, I know one of your favorite things to do is make sticky note uh, art. Uh, right. So one thing that I've done before, I think would be really good for a family activity is write down names of God mm -hmm. uh, and then kind of post that sticky notes all over your house or make like a big poster board, or whatever. And then talk about as a family, why those names came to that or what those names mean. Uh, the, the different names of God gives us different ways that we can connect to God, but it's different ways that God shows up on, and is involved in our lives. So that's, that's a practical activity as well. Uh, whether you're with a family or you're alone, it's just taking time to 
name the names of God that come to your head and, and why those connect to you. Yeah, for sure. So, All right. Confession. Tell us about confession, yeah. Pastor. <laughs> yeah. So confession is recognizing that even though we love God and we are loved by God completely, uh, there are still things in our lives that are not what they should be. There are still parts of our lives that are not yet fully Christ-like. And so we turn to God and we acknowledge those things. We repent of those things. We turn them over to God so that they no longer hinder us. And we seek God's help in living a life that is free from those sins, you know, the, 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 using the theological word there of sin. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, confession is, uh, you know, again, in the Lord's prayer, it's, you know, forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So, uh, you know, there's, there's something about confession that's tied with, you know, our ability to be forgiven and our ability to forgive other people too. It's all kind of wrapped up in this one big bundle. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that this has been important and, and different spiritual leaders through the centuries have given us uh, ways of, uh, thinking about this, um, uh, uh, Ignatius of Loyola, he talked about this practice of uh, doing a nightly examination of your conscience. You know, he, he encouraged people to, before they went to bed, just examine your conscience and think, what things did I engage in today that I should not have? Or what things should I have done that I did not do? And uh, using that as a way to, to guide our, our confession. And John Wesley picked up on that and he encouraged his followers to do the same thing. He had a whole list of like 20 questions that uh, he would encourage, he, he himself used this practice and he encouraged his followers, the Methodists, to you know, ask these questions, to ask, you know, what, what are the different ways in which maybe I did not fully live up to the image of God in me? Yeah. How do you think about confession or, or what, what, what comes to mind when you think of confession? Yeah, I think it's uh, especially in the mindset that we are right now uh, in, you know, preparing for Good Friday, preparing for Easter, is that a lot of times it's like we kind of have the mindset of we think we are doing the right thing until we until it all kind of blows up at our face. And I kind of think about that as like the Last Supper, as we'll talk about, it's like when Jesus was like, one of you will betray me. And everyone's like, no, no, no. You know, I wouldn't do that. Like I could never mess up. And, but then we realize is that uh, a lot of them messed up, you know, we, we know for sure Peter and Judas, but uh, there's a lot more of this idea of like confessing uh, is something that uh, has to be done in humility. And it's something that almost is like, has to be done before we uh, like, when I say has to like, but it's something that we need to be aware of to do before we actually step into the presence of God. Uh, one of Jesus's uh, last words on the cross is, you know, talking about, please forgive them for they do not know. Right. Like Jesus like spent some of his last words can like in this moment of confession and, and forgive me father, like all these things of a confession. So for me, it's like uh, confession's a huge deal of, laying things at the feet of our God, of our Redeemer, our Sustainer, so that we can be, we can empty ourselves to be filled by God again. But the people who think that they don't need to uh, give up themselves, or they don't need to lay themselves down, are the people who uh, either are going to give a, a cold dose of reality pretty soon, or the people that are actually straying away from the true purpose of Jesus. Uh, you got people when Jesus uh, asked about how to pray, uh, I think it's the book of Luke chapter 14, but don't fact check me. Uh, when Jesus talked about uh, the Pharisee that prayed and the, like the poor man or the beggar that prayed and the Pharisee was all about, look at me, I did all this, look how great I am. And the poor man uh, was the one who said, I don't deserve God. I don't deserve who I am. And I'm laying who I am at the feet of Jesus because I know that Jesus is who sustains me and I need Jesus. And so Jesus gave that model and gave that, that uh, symbol and that, that story to let us know that the people who think that they're doing it right are the people who don't take time to confess and, and bring themselves to the feet of the Lord, uh, of their Father, of their Redeemer, of their Creator, or people who uh, are kind of missing a step or people who are missing 
kind of the point of really pouring ourselves out for God. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think that's a big deal for us is like, I know that we don't uh, do confession, maybe the same as a lot of churches, but um, see if y'all know at our church, what is a time that we do kind of mass confession or when is a time that we kind of do a, a time of prayer of confession at our church? Anyone, anyone? <laughs> Before communion. Yeah, that's that's the time I think about. Yeah, we, we do that every time we're preparing to come to the Lord's table. So it's important, like you say, that we unburden our souls of things that may be holding us back before we have that time of, of union, communion with God. So, yeah. I think that's the big one. And when I think about practical uses or like ones of this, I think it just comes down to is like you just writing or spending time of understanding things that um, may not be going the way that they should be going or be doing the way that they should be doing. I think this takes um, the most like self-reflection and this takes the most honesty and vulnerability and humility. And so this takes the time of sitting down each day or sitting down and going, okay, where do I feel called and where is God leading and, and what are ways that maybe I'm not doing that? Or what are some ways that maybe I kind of fell short a little bit? And so I think confession as a whole really takes time for us to be honest, time for us to be vulnerable and time for us to like really not just like trying to destroy ourselves. Look how bad I am, but it's like time to say, okay, what are things that maybe are taking up time or maybe things that are, are filling that space and are creating that character of myself that should be uh, God. As we said that the quote that prayer is, uh, prayer is showing the nature of the person who's praying or the essence of who is praying. Uh, it's uh, who we are and who makes us, or uh, what makes us up. So confession is a huge time to go, okay, how am I pouring out the stuff to be then filled and transformed uh, through prayer with God? Definitely. So how does that move us on to T, Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. This one, uh, Psalms 118 kind of sums it up very well, is give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. Um, probably all of y'all have heard that verse before and all of y'all probably heard songs all about that verse. But Thanksgiving is this idea that we do, uh, I think we do probably the second most prayer. I think the first most of prayer we do is the supplication part. Uh, but this part, I think Thanksgiving is we're good at giving thanks. Uh, we're good at uh, being grateful people for the most part. And we have a whole holiday for it too. But Thanksgiving is this idea of, again, stepping into humility and understanding and realizing that what we have uh, in our lives, at, on our person, whatever, is not of ourselves, but it is from God. And so spending that time to say, I'm giving thanks to what I have. Uh, and to be in this mode and in this state of gratefulness allows us, again, to connect to the creator uh, who sustains and, and, and is a part of that uh, thankfulness. And this allows us to be in that state of heart and that state of mind to not just be like, a, well, I earned this or this is my life and this is what I have. But it's like allows us to stay in that life of humility of saying to be thankful and to be able to be in that state that we are able to give thanks, and then be blessings to others. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think especially right now, you know, this time we're going through, it, it's, it's easy to focus on all the ways that things are going wrong or the ways that things feel like they're falling apart. You know, we, you know, we're not able to do the things that we normally do in our lives. We're not able to gather together. Some of us aren't able to go to work. Some aren't able to be with their families or loved ones. And, um, you know, so it's, it's easy to focus on all the ways that things just are not going right, you know, and not, not to mention the cause of all of that, you know, the sickness itself, people are getting sick, people are dying. Um, so in the midst of that, uh, it's important, uh, it's all the more important, I think, to give thanks for the things that are good, because there are still blessings in our lives, there are still good things that are going on in our lives, and if we don't take the time to give thanks, then we end up with this skewed vision of the way life is, and we think that things are just 
you know, the worst that they could possibly be, when in fact, God still continues to, to offer us blessings. So it's, it, we have to have that as a counterbalance for the downsides. For sure. I think this time too, like, I think it's a great time to also be so aware of what we're thankful for. Like we can be, we're so aware of what's going wrong, but we also can be so aware of like, oh, wow, this is why I'm so blessed uh, type thing. And I think it's important that uh, in that state of thankfulness, it then acts us to move. So, you know, if I'm so blessed that I have meals that I can eat still every day, it's like, okay, out of that thankfulness, I then could be moved to make sure that like, okay, how can I help others to, to be in that same place? Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I've talked with some folks that say, you know, if anything, if there's any silver lining that comes out of this time, you know, wouldn't it be great if we all had a little bit better sense of all the things that we do have in our lives that we take for granted so that we can do better at giving thanks on a regular basis, because that's, that's going to be essential, you know, going forward, even after, even after we get back to normal, maybe the new normal is going to involve a little bit more gratitude for, for the good things in our lives. Shameless plug. I think uh, the Lexington progress uh, had, a uh, thing about like what are we taking for granted um, at this time and I think that's another great tool that we could do is what are some things that like we're taking for granted some things that like if we took away right now we'd be like oh you know whether it be hot water or air conditioning or electricity or food or or family and friends that are healthy and care for us and uh, stuff like that it's like when we're in this state too of like I think that puts us in a good uh, realm uh, a family activity that I've done with kids uh, that I've seen done with families before uh, is if you get a sheet of paper uh, and then uh, everyone gets a sheet of paper and then you write down something you're thankful for and then you pass your sheet of paper around in a circle for like a minute and everyone just keeps writing one thing they're thankful for uh, and then uh, your sheet of paper should be filled with things that you're thankful for and just kind of go through those uh, with each other. Uh, because it's important for us to not take these things for granted, but understand what are we thankful for? Understand what is God giving you and what is God placing in your life that you can then use in your mission, in your connection, in your life uh, with God. So I think it's like knowing that if you are, have a comfortable house or a comfortable paycheck, it's like, sweet. Now, where do you feel God is using that sense of thankfulness or that gratitude? Uh, if you have a skill like uh, our nitwits making the masks, you know, my, uh, my mom is sending me a mask that I'm excited for, but she started making those too. And she's, uh, she has a gift and she's thankful for, uh, being able to use that gift and out of that thankfulness, she's then using it type thing. But first you got to inventory kind of, what are you thankful for? What are your talents? What, what has God blessed you with that you can now use, um, for the purpose and using the outer world. But first it takes the time to step into this moment of prayer and step into this moment of uh, with God uh, type thing. So give me 20 seconds. My cat is meowing at the window. <laughs> oh, again, this is the kind of peek behind the curtain that uh, Connor and I give you into our lives uh, as we are not just Bible study leaders, but we are also uh, lovers of our pets. Yeah, I, I don't have pets, but yeah. Is she okay? Yeah, she was just, I don't know if you could hear her, but she was just so annoyed that like, like, uh, whenever I was explaining something, like I went, oh, stop, stop. And then I got caught, but all right. <laughs> Last one on, uh, is supplication. Supplications. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that, brother Chris. So, yeah, again, I, I think that sometimes this is the one that we do rush to when we think about praying. It, it, it is a very important part of prayer, even though it's not the only part. Uh, it, it is asking for our needs to be met. And sometimes, I, I think that the powerful thing about prayer is that, you know, but when, when life just seems overwhelming and when we're faced with something that just seems bigger than we can deal with, we do have that power to go to God and say, help, because I can't do this on my own. And so that's what supplication is. In the Lord's Prayer, it's give us this day our daily bread. And so it may be, you know, God, give me 
food to eat, give me a, a, a roof over my head, give me clothes to wear, give me a family to belong to. It, it can be praying for others, you know, heal the, those who are sick, heal me when I am sick. And, and so it's, it's again, just laying those needs out in such a plain way that sometimes, you know, it is praying for supernatural providence to come into play. Sometimes what happens to go back to an earlier point is that, you know, God reminds us, okay, you know, God, God says, I'll do my part, but you can do your part too. So, you know, make sure that you're doing the things that you can do and then leave the rest to God. So it's, uh, it's this big, uh, complex, rich thing of uh, just making our needs known so that God is helping us to, to make sure that all of our needs are met. Which is, it's a super important part of prayer. Um, but I also think that uh, what's, what I like about this model, there she is, what I like about this yeah. model uh, is that uh, we understand that like supplication is a very important part of prayer. Uh, but also what I like about this model, and I talked to youth about this, that it's last. It's last. It's it's praying for like our needs and kind of praying for what's around us is very important and necessary. But first we go through kind of adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and then it's almost like, you know, it, and it's kind of like following a lot of David's uh, psalms. It's like kind of follows this kind of notion as well. It's like David doesn't just come in and go, all right, God, I need this. You know, it's David does all these like beautiful, like sometimes he, he comes up right at the gate, but he makes sure that he has all these things and, and talks through it because through this idea is that we know that we do need to ask God uh, for things. We do need to lift people up in prayer and situations up in prayer and, and all that up in prayer. But also we need to be aware of like, how are we having this full conversation with God? Are we stopping the conversation at, hey God, I need you to do this? Or are we having this full, robust conversation of uh, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, then supplication? But supplication is a huge part of prayer, is giving our needs and calling our needs up to God um, and giving, giving up control of our lives and putting that in the hands of God. I think it's a huge, huge thing with supplication. And, and the, the the weird part of that is that, he, like you say, even though we sometimes rush to that as as if it were the only part of prayer, still there, there's some kind of mental block, at least in me, and I think in a lot of people. Maybe it, maybe it's a guy thing. I don't know, but I, there's a part of me that thinks, ah, I can handle all of my stuff myself. I don't need to ask for any help. So sometimes I actually, you know, even when I should be making supplications, I I forget to do it, or I just, you know have some resistance to doing it, but I, I think it's a good reminder that this is part of what it means to have that connection with God. Mm -hmm. I always like that idea. We've talked about this before in another Wednesday where a lot of times when we have a, maybe it is a guy thing, but I think it is a human nature thing that when we have a problem, like, yeah, we, we need, we know we need to pray about it, but a lot of people go, but that problem will still be here tomorrow right? And they'll still be here next week. So it's like a lot of people like, sure, you have to pray about it. But also it's like, but I also need to do something about it. And so it's like, sometimes our things will be like, hey, God, uh, please help me with this. All right, now I'm going to go and take care of it type yeah. thing. But it's important for us, like, what I've really like grown in this idea of prayer is that prayer is this idea of like, yes, we're still going to have to get through stuff. But it's like, are we trying to control our faith? Are we trying to control us getting through it? Or are we truly resting in this place, knowing that we have a creator that's looking out for us? We, yes, we've done things that we've messed up on, but we can be thankful for, for a savior that, that doesn't rest in our blemishes, but still comes through, uh, through that. And then in that, because of that, our voices are raised up, our problems are raised up. And, and we're able to have that connection, but we have to be resting in that connection. We have to be resting in that presence. If mm -hmm. we're just entering into it when we have a problem, then we're not really praying. We are like, we, we are, but we're kind of just using prayer as a tool versus using prayer as this way to fully connect uh, in a discipline in a way to worship and, and with God. So that's kind of my like take is like, 
Um, you know, spending time in, in true authentic prayer, spending time in, in uh, you know, making sure that we're not doing uh, what was, I want to make sure I don't mess up on, on the quote, but is the idea of, uh, what do you call it? Is it up on, on my screen now? Mm, we're still seeing the Acts prayer slide. Oh, that's fine. We'll see if I can, I can read it. The function of prayer is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of one who prays. Like I said, I didn't want to mess up that. But changing the nature of who prays is, is our nature isn't going to change if we just try to uh, do it on our own strength and just try to get through it. Uh, but our nature truly changes when we rest in this place of connecting to God um, and through prayer. But as we said, is that prayer is not just talking to God. Uh, prayer is doing different activities, is, is, uh, so, is the Acts model, is adoration, confession, thanksgiving, um, and supplication. But it's doing activities. It's, it's giving up our control of our lives and placing it in the hands of God. So prayer is not just bow our heads and, and let's say a prayer. Prayer is this idea of stepping into the presence of our Creator so that our nature can be changed. So maybe that's our challenge to everybody this week as we spend some time reflecting on uh, the, the mystery of the crucifixion and resurrection is um, spend some extra time in prayer going through, maybe, maybe going through this model and spend some time being willing to be changed because that's what prayer is about at its heart is uh, allowing ourselves to come in contact with God, knowing that we might not be the same afterwards. So um, I don't know if that, I don't know if you would add to that or change. It's kind of a scary thought sometimes. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, it, for, for control freaks like me, prayer is a scary thing because I might have to give up some of my control. I might have to be changed, but it's what life is about. I think, uh, yeah, no, I agree with all that. And the last thing I would say is that another challenge is to prayer does not just have to be, we close our eyes and pray as a family, but find ways that y'all can do activities in this idea of prayer. Uh, and you can use this model of acts as a way to kind of connect and, and do it. But I know I've done it with youth uh, multiple times. So we've done activities just to give them, because sometimes praying, it's like, okay, what do I say? Dear God, thank you for today. And okay, bye. I think how to pray is a hard thing that we learn sometimes we realize there isn't a how but it's all about the discipline and it's all about uh the what and like connecting type things so i think another challenge is is what you said but also it's finding ways as a family or finding ways as a person uh yourself or with a spouse or family member or whatever is finding ways that you all can be in this discipline of prayer even if it's not necessarily just closing your eyes and praying but it's how can we do different activities uh, how can we do different things that are rooted in this idea of uh, not just to gain favor of God, but to really change the nature of ourselves uh, and to really give up our power and allow God uh, to lead lead us to where God is leading us in this time. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Welcome for other chat. Hello. Well, that's, that's, you know, that one. <laughs> Here's Gabbana. Hello, Gabbana. Hello, Isabella. Hello to you both. But that was fun. Okay. <laughs> love y'all. Hope y'all loved our, our, uh, yeah, like you keep saying, peek behind the curtain of our rambling, chaotic, but loving selves. <laughs> life it's life but again just a reminder um make sure that you uh you are invited to be part of our midday times of reflection with our uh our pastors again uh tomorrow is going to be charlotte burnett and then friday will be david beecham and then uh thursday night 6 p.m fix some comfort food and have that ready uh to to eat uh, around your table as we share at a time of reflection for monday thursday at 6 p.m and good friday at 6 p.m thinking about the crucifixion and then uh easter sunday morning celebrating the resurrection together at 10 15 a.m sunday so look forward to seeing all you guys then uh,
blessed Holy Week to you. Connor, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Talk to everybody later. All right. Peace. Peace.